Today I'm going to be talking about turbulence and why it's the most underrated thing in Blender. I have three projects that I'm going to be using to demonstrate why you need to learn about it. I have this text reveal animation, it's just a silhouette of the T for turbulence because I love turbulence a lot. And I'm just going to show you quickly here what I'm doing to achieve that effect. So what I have for this project is just a particle emitter that emits particles and a turbulence force that you can add by using shift A, force fields, and then turbulence. You will see turbulence used in a lot of areas like cloth simulation, particle simulations, and even fluid simulations. Today I want to specifically talk about the turbulence in the force field and demonstrate to you some of its crucial parameters. You can see if you go to the force settings, you see that uh, it doesn't really have a lot of settings and the only settings you want you will be using most of the time are the strength, size, and uh, noise. So essentially, turbulence is a way to add noise to movement of any object or any particles in your scene. You have strength to determine how strong the turbulence is. For example, if I put it at point 0.1, we barely see any noise in the movement of uh, the particles. You can see the particles are being emitted directly in a normal direction. But without any turbulence, they're just going straight forward. They're also colliding with my colliders that I have in here, which is a T to obstruct the particles and create a silhouette of the particles. Now, if I go to the turbulence force and increase the strength to something like 10, you can see we start to introduce some noise in the turbulence. We can scale up the noise by changing the size here. So if we put it at something like 10, the waves that uh, the turbulence are causing through the particle are also very large. We can also animate this size. So you can see initially, we start with a very noisy, with very noisy animation. And as our turbulence goes up, the size of the, the waves or the noise becomes larger and larger, hence less movements in the particles. I think this project will help you visualize how the size of turbulence will affect your animation. So I have a few particles here that I'm emitting on a mesh and uh, they're all being emitted at once on the first frame because that's what I set as the start and end frame. They have a lifetime of 250 so that we can see the, them for the whole length of the timeline. Now if I play back, you can see I have a turbulence force here that is adding the animation and it's the only thing that is adding any force to the particles. Everything has been set to zero. And if I turn off the turbulence force completely, nothing happens. All the particles just stay in one position. I also added some simple hand animation to make it seem like this character was an airbender. I'm going to bring back my turbulence, give it a force of one and play. as the character moves their hands, it makes it seem like he's air bending at his leaves. Now, just observe the size of the waves. If I increase this to something like 20 or 30, see, we get larger and larger waves. And uh, when you make it smaller, you get smaller waves. You can also set a fall off for this turbulence, for example, if I turn on the minimum distance and maximum distance, I can determine I can determine the maximum distance where the turbulence is active. If say I animated this character moving around, moving forward, and just parented the turbulence to that bone, to any of his bones, I can make it seem like he's actually causing some turbulence or air bending these leaves just have to increase the turbulence force to amplify the effect. Move the turbulence close to him. And look at that. Turbulence is not only limited to particles, but you can also use it for something like cloth simulation. I have a cloth that is pinned on these four poles and all I have is a turbulence force that has been animated to us to change the size and strength. If we play back, it makes it seem like we are adding wind to the mesh without adding any wind forces. If I select the turbulence force, I can make this even stronger and 
we have wind blowing over this without having any wind. And the advantage to this is that we can play around with the size. So a size of one will give us more smaller waves. And a size of say something like 30 will give us larger waves. Moving the turbulence around or animating the turbulence moving around can easily give you an effect of wind changing directions. Like any other force, turbulence can also be used to animate smoke. It can also be used to affect liquids. I have a fluid simulation here, and if I play back, nothing happens because I have turned gravity all the way down. If I bring it back, the fluid starts to fall. But uh, let me remove that and now add turbulence. Give this a strength of 5. Let me change the size. Let me be the strength back to 1. And we have some nice turbulence. This could be also used as maybe we can turn these particles into some form of mesh. I'm going to use a cube, a simple cube like this. Select the domain and uh, in the render settings of the particles, I can select an object. Just select the cube or whatever you want to render. Just going to also turn off the instancing so that I just see the cubes. And we have some nice particles with turbulence. Or we can use a Suzanne head. Thank you for watching. If you want to look at the project files, I'm going to leave all the links in the description. You can download the project files on my Gumroad, Patreon, and YouTube community tab. If you're interested in more realistic particle animation, but you don't want the hassle of creating it by yourself from scratch, Light Architect has an amazing product for you. It comes with a lot of assets and animation presets that you can use and integrate in live action footage. Links are provided in the description. Let me know what you think about it.